So the journey is actually, for, uh, I just uh, asked, artists is also asked me where my journey, actually we started from Beijing and then we moved to Shanghai. From Shanghai we went to Copenhagen in Denmark and then from De Copenhagen we moved back to Beijing and then we moved to Shanghai and then from Shanghai we moved to Athens. And then we, from Athens we moved to Chengdu. Chengdu is a city, maybe you are not, not familiar with it. In, this is China. And uh, it's in the west, southwest of China. It's the biggest city in the southwest China. Uh, till today, the population of the city is 20 million. So it's double size of Greece. And uh, it is also a very ancient city. So in ancient China, it was also a kingdom at the time. Uh, so actually, um, in 2018, I came from Chengdu back to Greece, and then I went to Napoli to study to, uh, to uh, study theater. But where it begins? It begins from here. This photo is very meaningful. It was the first picture I took in Epidavros Museum. Uh, this is Yang Yang. Uh, he was only one years old, very little. Uh, he was very surprised to see a huge poster here. That was the first day we were in Vigurio, uh, a small village near Akilavros. And then I spent 15 days there. Uh, days ago, I also met Georgina Kapodaki. Uh, uh, she's the uh, she's, uh, uh, initiator of the Akilavros Lyceum. And then we, she also, she also, we, we also went back to our memory. But at that time, I was the only Chinese person accepted here. Uh, and also it was very difficult because at that time I, I studied the finance in my bachelor degree. I didn't have any background of art. Uh, of course I played flute, but professionally I didn't have any cultural uh, art background. Uh, but then accepted. And uh, within a 15 days, uh, I really enjoyed the studying and the learning, practicing, and in the end we have a performance in a ancient Stadium, also in the ancient theater of the Bilaros, a small presentation. Uh, that was where I started. But I, I, in, the, in the fifth day, I asked a question to myself Can I continue in film? That was a big question to me. I really enjoyed the past 15 days, but I have never studied theater in my uh, professional study before. So. Um, the first one, the first person I asked is uh, this gentleman. His name is Dennis Kiyosun Ri. He was my mentor in the Davos Museum. He was a professor from the New York University. And uh, uh, he was a great person, and he was also uh, an actor uh, in Broadway. So I asked him, I talked with him for 20 minutes, and uh, he, in the, in the very beginning, he said, yes, of course, they should continue. You have done very well in the 15 days in Davros. And uh, he said the one thing is, in future, if you become a director, remember to leave a role of actor for yourself. At that time, I didn't understand. I, and I was still thinking, if I want to continue studying theater, but uh, he, uh, he's already saying you will become a director. And then you also become an actor. Uh, and then... Excuse me, what was, please repeat his advice? He advised me to, uh, in future, if I become a director, a theater director, then I should leave a, a role in my play as an actor, which means I, I also need to act in my own play. Thank you, I'm sorry. But at that time, I, was, didn't, I didn't understand that at the time. I was okay, that's a little too long time later, right? I never expect that. And, uh, then I talked to many people uh, in the Lyceum, for example, uh, Christina, uh, Maria, and also a lot of people. But at that time, I was thinking which university to go. Of course, uh, the Lyceum was also organized by University of Peloponnese. So definitely, University of Peloponnese can be one of the choice. I also sent the letters to University of Athens, Aristotle University, and uh, University of Patras. Uh, they require me to have the background of humanities, or at least I speak Greek. Mm -hmm. oh, I could not. So, but then I talked to the professors from the University of Peloponnese. They said, yeah, why not? Let's see what I have done in the past 15 days. They say, why not we give a try? Then I started to apply uh, for the uh, 
master and postgraduate program, uh, which is uh, led by architects. But uh, it was very difficult. Uh, that was a very difficult time. And the Mercedes also went through the hard time with me. Uh, I still remember what you said. Always remember that one. You said, this is a very difficult thing. If you, you manage to do it, you will be a hero. I don't know if you remember. I always remember. <laughs> Wow. Which he means, I know, it's an impossible thing, it's an impossible mission. But then, you know, actually, during that, I was also going to give up. But then, Ellie said, well, you have done so many things for that. Keep it. At least we try. If we the end, okay, we give up. So, well, I insisted, and I still remember in that October, in our, still at the time, I having my own company doing the culture project which is a mid Greece music journey. I brought the Chinese musicians and also the people coming together. So one stop uh, was in Napio, in Black Kong. And uh, that time was my first time to, make, uh, to meet artists. So we had the event in here, in Black Kong. So, um, so it was very nice, and uh, you know, the people come, came together with me, they said, how can you really study in this so beautiful town? That they, they, they found that Napoli was very beautiful. I said, yeah, this is a place that I will study. So in the end, though it was very difficult, then, but still we managed to apply. So now I'm coming. And before I came, artists is posted in the Facebook saying something that we are waiting for the Chinese students to be come. Because at that time, the difficulty is I was still waiting for my visa. Take ages. Then the city gave me the visa <laughs> very quickly. So that is also a very good help. So and uh, then this is the, the uh, after I came to Nakrio, I, I think already two weeks, and the artist has asked me to film a video in your office. I don't know if you remember. I remember everything. <laughs> yeah. So this is a video. Yeah, we took. And uh, then we come and uh, see these uh, all the people in my uh, in our class, and I got to the student castle. At that time, I became the only. Not the only Chinese student, but the only foreign student in our program. So it is, that's why it was difficult. So the study in Napoleon was very happy, and uh, it was uh, actually in the beginning it was also difficult because the class was taught in Greek, in Greek, and I was the first the foreign student there. So actually, what I see or always I, I feel from the Greek people is. From the first class, my classmates, they just came to one by one to, to, to my side and they translate for me, for the whole class. <laughs> just this, this class, this, this, this guy, and then next class, they change another class. Nobody asked them to do that. They just do them by themselves. So this is something I always feel from Greek people. And it's making me okay. I feel I can do it. You people are trying. Uh, and then later, the, the, the teachers, they found there is a Chinese guy in this class. They become to also speak both in Greek and in English. So it's becoming more international uh, program. So we have uh, these four these classes in Nashville. And then also after, after school, I also have some, some time with my classmates. We prepare for the projects, for them to project even for, for the prison. And uh, this, this was a very good time for me. And also my teachers, well, actually we have lots of teachers. I only found these pictures of which I was together. Uh, so a lot of teachers, uh, activities. The first one is the fairy tale marathon. But actually in that time, I was totally confused. What, what I should do? Because that was my first experience. Uh, first activity I should do. Then with my classmates, they, they told me, this explained to me, then we tried to make a fairy tale uh, to tell. And, uh, then there are more activities coming. This is also a very meaningful one, uh, supported by artists. She brought us to a prison. That was my first time in my life to be in a prison. Uh, but it's, uh, it was uh, also a very precious experience. So I, we, we three, we, we are a team, we were a team, and then we make a drama education program for the prisoners in the, there. And, uh, I will be a bit faster for the first part, because the first part will be in Greece. Then I will be in China. So maybe you are more curious about what it's like in China. So, and then the activity is a public theater, uh, which we call it a Theater. And then it's a 
Theodore Dromos. Uh, so that was also a very interesting one. We perform in the streets of Nashville uh, with all the people. And uh, then I had a Chinese uh, culture lecture in the Tikon. And uh, a seminar for the undergraduates about the intercultural theater. And also, actually, at that time, in the meantime, I was in Greek in the University of Athens, but the police school. <laughs> <laughs> so I only managed to do, actually, this time, though I, I, mean, I haven't spoken any Greek for four years, at least I'm here, I, I feel my Greek is improving. <laughs> I, I don't know why, but it's just a feeling. So I, I studied the Greek at uh, the Alpha level in the University of Athens, and then I studied the uh, Alpha uh, Beta, at the, uh, the level Beta. But then we, uh, we went back to China, so it was stopped. But uh, definitely, this is the language I will study for my whole life. And also, actually, in the meantime, I was learning acting. Acting is also introduced by artists. So I went to with the Katia Eru uh, in the Pro uh, So because of what I think is, I think, you know, because I, I didn't have any background of acting. So I think it's very also important for me to learn some theater acting. So I went to the uh, drama school there, and also I have a craft class with uh, Katia. So basically to improve my acting. And also for the second year, in 2019, I went to a Dallas Lyceum for the second time to learn uh, acting. So with the new, with also the other people from the uh, many countries, we work together and then we collaborate. So, and also cultural events. Uh, so though it's drama education, but still in the, in the, during the postgraduate program, in the meantime in Athens, I, have been, I still have been working on many cultural projects, like especially music. Uh, for example, this one is uh, with uh, Sophia, the concert. This one with uh, Alicia Tena Areti. Uh, this is a uh, Ikronaki uh, uh, art festival. We play in the balcony. And uh, this, is, this is also very interesting. It was in the Orthodox Church, inside of the church. So today is uh, my food. And this is in the museum. I don't remember the name. The War Museum, I think. And uh, this is in Upper Polis Museum. Uh, this I play, I performed in my room there. So, but uh, this is some parts of it. Uh, but uh, not that many as I started uh, studying theater before. Because before that, I was full time on cultural exchange projects. But then, but still, I continue with all these uh, projects. And also, we had this concert all together uh, in Athens. And also, I try to. Uh, go to some TV advertisement. Uh, one of the most popular ones is the one with the buggy. Mm -hmm. And also with some film, some TV. I'm trying to do more exercise uh, with these acting uh, activities. And uh, also we organize our summer school uh, in 2019. And uh, that, was, that one was also very successful. Uh, we had uh, an Anna Tickley and uh, Maria as a mentor in that field, and uh, we, we brought the children to make to Messini, to Epidavros, and also stay in that field. And uh, we create a, a drama course based on the Aristophanes first. Uh, so this was reported by many medias, and also by Chan Daily, and uh, the Greek embassy, the Chinese embassy, they all reported this uh, summer school. It was very successful. It was our first one, but then it turned out to be the last one before the COVID. Then the COVID came. Then we stopped. But then uh, we will restart this uh, summer school. I also, with the support from artists, I founded the Pericosi Lesmos Drama School. And then uh, I collaborated with the Stavros Karayani and uh, Yanis Papagopoulos. And uh, we worked together. And uh, we, based on my uh, baking opera play for the idea of Alagidamu, then we we, I, I wrote the play, and then we uh, they directed. I collaborated with the 16 uh, Greek stu um, students from the drama school. We we spent like two or three months and uh, worked together. Then we performed the, uh, in the Theater Olympia. Um, so it, all this also turned out to be a very interesting project. 
Uh, actually, days ago, I went and, and they invited me to Piracosi in this most drama school to teach their students in the first year uh, intercultural theater. So that uh, turned out to be like a circle. I, I start from there with, a, with this, and then days ago, I closed the circle with uh, my class. Um, then, also, Akis brought me to uh, Tripoli, Tripoli, right? Tripoli. Yeah. And uh, then awarded me the ambassador of the uh, master program. So this is also one thing I feel very honored uh, in this uh, in, in, in that field. And also, uh, I have been involving in some uh, city exchange projects so for example, this photo, it was this one, it was the Chengdu and uh, Athens, so was, they were signing the sister cities agreement. So this is what we did in 2019 or 18, I don't remember. And this one, it is uh, Major, uh, Mr. Brulia's uh, time, he awarded me as the chief, chief Chinese president of Athens. It's a very interesting name. Mayor Yeah, yeah, he was the mayor of Athens. Uh, yeah. And so this is, this is also one, but actually at that time not only with Chengdu but also with Shanghai, with other cities so we have been uh, involved in the city exchanges. So actually this time I come here also we are I'm involved in some, uh, for example, the sister schools, also the, some cultural projects well, between Chengdu and Athens. But this is also why I, after my graduation, I chose to go back, went back to Chengdu because we, I feel, in Greece we have closer connection with, with, uh, uh, with Chengdu. So, now we are going to the turning point. Now the time comes to the 2020, when the COVID started. Then, it is, uh, you remember this picture, right? Menu mess meeting. I remember, at the time I was in Athens, I was, I stayed in my place for one month, lockdown. And so, at that time I was thinking what I should do, should I continue the, my, what I did before uh, my postgraduate program, or I should have a new thing to do. So my friend in the Chinese school, she suggested to, for me to work in a school, but at that time, because of COVID, Many uh, companies or uh, training schools that were closed uh, because of COVID. So she uh, recommended me to work in a school as a drama teacher. But at that time in Chengdu, there was no drama teacher, not any, not, not one. And uh, also in the schools, there was no real drama classes. And the only one is that for 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 some. Uh, uh, part time and uh, some some uh, drama companies that come to a school they uh, choose some students to play uh, to perform a play that's all but then uh, so she introduced two principles to me over over schools in Chengdu then they, the two principals called me in Athens where I was still in Athens they talked with me you know, um, they asked what I learned here what I'm professional in. And then we talk about drama education. They were very fond of drama education. So they invited me to, to work in a school as a drama teacher. But at the time, I didn't agree. I said, OK, I will go back to see how the school is like, and then I will decide. Uh, so after I went back to China, I went to the two schools, and I, um, I choose one of them. I cho the reason I choose this school, this is the school I choose. I choose this school is only because the children that there, um, their family are not in very good condition, I mean economically. Uh, the other school, the children, they are from the rich family, they look very clean, tidy, very well educated. But the children from this school, every day they look very, not dirty, but not clean. And uh, also their parents, most of their parents are working far away from them. They're not living with their parents. And even, <coughs> A uh, more severe problem is uh, many of them they have the problem of the family violence. So I asked the children in the school one question: What is the happiest thing in your childhood? They told me 
as long as if I, my parents that both hit me, then I'm very happy. That's a happy thing. I was shocked. This is 21st century. Why, why still children are like that? So I went to this school. It's a public school. And uh, I started teaching drama there for all the students in the whole school. So every week, I have more than 20 classes. And uh, from the first year to the fifth year, all the children. So uh, then this, this drama class become very well known in that region. And uh, uh, actually, the principal of the school, she was, uh, for me, I think she was very uh, brave. She was the first one to make drama as a compulsory drama course in the school. So she was very supporting to me. And uh, this was my first, my really first drama class, you know, in China. And uh, the children, they're not from primary school, they're from the kindergarten. Uh, they, that was in June, uh, the children's day, the first, the first of June. And then we will become primary school students in September. By that time, I was still from kindergarten, and I had uh, my first drama class with them. And uh, all the parents, teachers, they just uh, sit around uh, watching. I was very nervous at the time. Yeah, it was difficult. But then I managed to succeed in this class. So also, when I talked with uh, Georgina, we also, she also thinks one thing very important is the braveness. So at that time, I think I feel I'm very brave to pretend, OK, I'm very experienced. But then, gradually, I give classes to all the children. But you know, there is one thing maybe most of you that you don't know. In the Chinese public schools, normally in one class, there are 50 to 55 students. How do you teach a drama class? Uh, I, I still remember at that time, uh, I asked, uh, I sent a message to artists. I asked the artists what I should do. So they get into the situation to think if they were artists, what do they can do? So this is a class lasted for uh, one semester. And then this class was reported by Sidney Reilly here in Greece. And uh, then it was, uh, uh, after that it was reported by the Greek embassy, the Chinese embassy, the Chinese media, the, the media in Chengdu. They found, wow, there is a, a school in Chengdu. They are working on the drama class based on the military story and from Greece. So people are, are found in that. So this is uh, uh, the report. And uh, later, um, I designed to be more interesting classes because I, I have a lot of time for one semester, three, four months. So I, made, I started to use the whole school. For example, you can see here. This is just a bound side of the teaching building. But then I make here, here is a plate. You can never know what is on the plate. It's a written ceramic course. So that's the ceramic course in our school. Because the milk is was excavated from the ceramic course. So I the children that came, I tried to, in the night, I went there, I tried to put something down, <laughs> some down on the ground. And then in the, in the class, okay, come here. We do like excavations, like an archaeologist. Then we the, the found the things, blah, blah. And then we make it more interesting. And uh, later, we also developed it to be a theatrical play, a very small play, like only five minutes. And at that time, we invited the, the Greek ambassador uh, to, uh, to our school. Uh, so we came him, and then we asked our children to perform music. Um, but actually, you know, this kind of performance has never been seen in the Chinese schools. So because it's very, how you say, it's very pioneering, and it's also a bit sensitive. Um, before we perform, actually, there were some people came to me and said, oh, we need to, how do you say, we need to check, we need to scan all your lines in the play, if they are correct, blah, 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 blah. I said, no, we don't do that. But then they insisted to change the one sentence, then they make a bigger problem, which is our main actress, uh, I think this girl, when the, during the performance, she forgot, because they changed her life. But uh, still, I insisted that it didn't change anything else. So, but uh, 
So this is uh, my first try in the drama class in the school. Uh, and then I brought the theatrical and, and theatrical group and out to perform in the bookshops, in the theaters, small theaters outside of the school. So they, become, they got more experiences. Um, also, this is the a second version of Miltis with my current school, and they become more professional. And uh, this is a poster pen painted by our teacher of fine arts. And uh, in January also, there, is a, there was a lecture in, in Ioanni, Ioannina University. Uh, I, I made a video presentation for that. And also, then after Miltis, we also went back to the Chinese poet, which is called Du Fu, one of the most um, famous poets in China. Uh, actually, he has a house, a house in, in Chengdu, which is uh, this one. This is his house. So I, we, we created this performance with my, uh, our theater group, children theater group. And then, I, in the beginning, I told them, my, my dream is bring you to the house of Fu Fu to perform the play of Fu Fu. But it was very difficult because this is like an archaeological site and it's a museum. It's not allowed you to perform there. But uh, at the end, um, that year, in June the 1st, in the Children's Day, this museum, they want to celebrate the Children's Day. Then they invite us to perform there. Mm -hmm. I made the dream come true. So the children were very excited uh, to perform there. But you know, one thing is, these children, I said, they were from those families. Even this girl, the girl in the front, this girl, which I like the most, she lost her mother that year. So the principal told me, take care of the, of the girl. She lost her mother very recently. So she was raised in by, uh, by her sister. But and also these children, every day you look at them like uh, from the, well, not, not a very many, so they were in the, in the, uh, my class, in a classroom or on stage, the total change. They were like different people. So this is what we see the influence of the, of the uh, drama class. And then we move to another play, but, I mean for the children's theater group. For the compulsory class, it's a continuous for every year, it's, 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 it's different. Uh, for the group, then we move to a more difficult one, Antigone. This is very difficult for Chinese children. And uh, these children, they were from the second year to the fifth year. So basically, they were seven years old to ten years old. So they were very young. For them to perform Antigone is uh, difficult. Then we make it, uh, of course, we rewrite it. It's not an original text. And uh, we make it to be a version of the school, the school version. And uh, the, uh, uh, when after we um, created this play, then it was um, accepted by the Fifth Festival. And also, uh, Ailey and I, we were also uh, went to the communities to give the drama workshops. Uh, like this, this was in the nature, it was a World Environment Day. We were in the, in the, in the park and forest to give them the uh, drama workshop. And this was, a, we were invited by the bookshop in the uh, dorm, uh, dorm-like uh, room, and then we give the, uh, the, the, the drama workshop about the, uh, the universe. So also, Ellie brought the Anshin Gurkha Lira and, uh, together in this workshop. So we, we were expanding our influences. So in the, that year, uh, I, I, I started in June, 2020 in the school. Then in December, I got my first uh, prize on drama education. So I went to Beijing. I, it's, a, it's a national drama education forum. Then I got my first uh, prize for that. Actually, you can see this lady here. Uh, her name is Li Yunin. She was the first person in China worked on drama education, art curriculum as I want. So okay, this is a very something very attractive. First, I started leading the arts education team. The team started with only eight and six, eight people, eight teachers. So 
And uh, then now say the Corona grows, uh, has grown up to be 12 teachers. From this September, it will become 14. So I'm hiring more uh, new teachers come to the team. And uh, every week, we have the, the group, uh, what's it called, the research and study together. And also, for example, like this girl, she is a girl I hired uh, last year. She graduated from the Central Academy of Drama. And so she is now the drama teacher in our school, in my team. But she needs to have her classes, and mm -hmm. then we see um, these all the, all the members from my art education team. We sit beside, we observe, we make notes, we make comments to her. Well, I will tell her what, what, what you can improve, or what you have done good, or what you have done bad. So this, and, uh, this is the music class, and also the, the, the fun art class, the dance class, we all do the same. So we, in this way, the whole team uh, improve our teaching techniques, and also the most important thing is uh, in our art education, we, we say we put the drama in education as the base, and we integrate music, fine arts, dance, and drama to be one, to be the integrated art curriculum. That is what we do. So drama is the base, is the base for the art education. But the thing is, the teachers of music, fine art, and dance, they have no idea about the drama. They, they have never seen any film performances. They have never known anything about drama. So I need to teach them. I need to give the training to them. That's also a very long process. So our drama curriculum, this is a drama curriculum in our school. What do we do? We have the basic compulsory course for all the children, all the students in our school. They have one drama class per week. Uh, so this is for all the children. And then we also have, in the second level, we have the elective uh, course, which we have an English theater, physical theater, puppet theater, Chinese opera, musical, program, different types of uh, drama uh, theater arts. So the children, they can choose which one I'm interested in and I want to study. And also, in the third level, we, we call it specialty course, which means the field groups. Uh, so I have my own field group, Ellie has her own field group, and also we have dance theater group and uh, different groups. So this is the drama curriculum now in our school. So it's, uh, it's kind of a system. And uh, actually, this system we established in 2021. Uh, even before that in previous school, I already have this uh, shape. But uh, in 2022 in China, there was a big thing happened. The Ministry of, Ed of Education of China, they issued a policy. In that policy, that, 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 the policy is that it's called the curriculum standards for art education or, or compulsory education. So which, which is like the law for all the art curriculum in the primary school and the, and the secondary school. And in that, uh, in 2022, the, in this uh, curriculum standard, it's the first time in the history that put the drama as the one discipline. So that's very important. In the, in the past, we only have two, music and fine arts. But now we have five, music, fine arts, dance, drama, and the cinema. So we have five. Uh, so actually, but what we do is before the uh, before the 2022, and in primary school, this you can see the photos. And these are my classes, daily classes. So what does it look like? Uh, this is my drama classroom where I have my own class, drama classroom. Ellie has hers, so we have the specific classroom, and uh, the children every day they have uh, they have this kind of classes. And uh, in middle school, it's a bit different. Because now we don't have enough drama teachers, now we only have four. So we, our focus is mainly on the primary school. But in the middle school, we also uh, give uh, the lectures, so it can be for hundreds of students. And also we give elective classes, and also we organize the theater groups. But here is one very interesting one. 
we were, I, I, I was having teaching, I was teaching on stage. There were 140 students at the same time. But it was an experiment. But it was very interesting. They were very focused on this class. And also, sometimes, I, I, I was also invited to teach in kindergarten, the very little kids. And so, for example, this is, a, I was in one kindergarten, and they were from the third year of kindergarten, so they were like five or six years old. And this, well, they were, from, they were four, around four or five years old, from the second year of primary school, uh, the, the kindergarten. And there, mainly, I teach the class, to show the teachers there how to teach a drum class. So after the drum class, you see all the teachers in the kindergarten, they come together. And I will share my experience and why I teach like that. Because for them, if they have no experience on drum education, it's very difficult for them to really understand what I'm doing in the class. So I will share what, the, what, the, what I was doing and, uh, and they will get more knowledge. So this is becoming more and more popular in, in China. And also, from last semester, I have been teaching in universities. So I have been teaching in the Chengdu College of Arts and Sciences. Uh, so I teach these two classes. Their major are primary education. They're not, they're not actors. They're in the primary education, so they will be the teachers of, for primary schools. So uh, I give them classes every week. Um, but the main, the, the course is drama in education, and it's the compulsory course. Uh, this, this will last for two years, for four semesters. I, I, I only finished the one. And uh, also I have drama classes for special groups, like these children. They were blind children. They could not see. So that was also my first time to teach a drama class for blind children. In the beginning, I didn't know how to do it because they cannot see me. So if I show anything, they may not understand. And also, uh, some of the children, for example, this little girl here, she basically, her skin and her hair are all white. So she looks very special to others. So the t actually, up, after this class, and their teachers were also sitting be beside, and they were watching. After I finished the class, the teacher was crying. And also some parents that were by, by side, they were also crying. They were asking why, why are you so moved? They said, because some of the children in the, the other classes, they never get involved. They were scared away. Especially like the that girl, she always, she knows the other people think she's very special. So she always, I think she has very uh, strong psychological uh, problem uh, because of the, but in my class, She's fully involved. Uh, basically, in my job class, I never treated anyone as special, no matter how, how special you are. So they will feel very safe in, in this class. And also, I give class job classes for parents. Because uh, in our school, uh, since the job class is a comparative course for all the children, but the parents, they have no idea. They always think, OK, we are teaching acting. Uh, we are teaching, we are making the children to be actors, but no. Uh, so, I, I um, irregularly organize some drama classes for the parents of our school. So, they come to, to, to you know, some parents say, they thought, uh, in the beginning they thought, okay, I come here maybe for a lecture like today. I, I sit there to, to listen, normally the parents' meetings are like that. But they say, okay, they didn't uh, you imagine when they come to my drama class, they were dancing, they were rolling, they were climbing, they were jumping. It was very tiring, <laughs> but they, they they really enjoy. It. So you can you can see this is uh, something we are changing, uh, even the parents. And um, also, I started train the new teacher, the drama teacher, because now in China for drama education, the most critical uh, problem is. We are lacking of drama education teachers. Uh, we have many, we have drama academies, but mainly they, they train uh, actors. So, but for the primary school and the secondary school, we need actor teacher. So, uh, for example, like uh, these two, these are my, they are both in my team now. They both graduated from the Central Academy of Drama. 
Uh, but they now under the, their master, so they are basically following me on all the instruction areas. So basically, the schools there they are not very really supported by the uh, financial department. Uh, but they and also, which means the teaching level, teaching quality will be low in those schools. But they uh, to I give the training also to them to improve, and also again I give more public drama classes. Uh, in our school, we also organize a theater festival in our school, but there is never like any theater festivals in any schools because uh, in the beginning, this is our first one. What we do is we, I, I don't like put on one stage and the one performance and then the other one and then the, the third one. I don't like this in this form. Uh, we use all the areas of the school. So make all the environments and all the corners of the school to be the stage, to be the theatrical space. Uh, so even from the first year, we make it like that. Like this one is Ellie with her theater group. There was a tree uh, in our school, uh, a tallow tree. So we make it a tallow tree theater. So the form under the tree, the children just uh, around to watch. Uh, so this is uh, our first. And then the second. The second one is becoming more interesting. We make it bigger, and um, and um, uh, <coughs> one thing we improve is they like these two parts. Uh, in these two parts, we make uh, all the actors. I mean, all the children in the school they can apply creations of the place. They say, I want to perform this play. I want to perform the story. Then they send us a short video of the introduction to us. They say, okay, it's fine. It's it's okay. Then we give a space in the school to them. <coughs> then, then they make everything by themselves. So they make the, the, the decoration, they make all the props, they all make the costumes, they make their own performances. So that's for them. And also, uh, during that, uh, that, this, this part, um, like carnival, it lasted for three hours. And uh, also we, put, we, uh, we invite some students in different classes to be the staff. So like a theater, here the actors are children, also the staff there managing the audiences or checking the tickets are also students, the children. And also one more thing we did uh, very, very pioneering is I persuaded our principal because in Chinese schools, the top thing is safety because they were worrying the children will get injured or they were danger, dangerous to, to, to them. But I, I managed to persuade the, our principal that all the children during that period of time, when they step out of the classroom, they are free. They can go to anywhere in the school. No teachers can affect them. They can choose to watch this performance or I watch that performance. They, it's their own decision. So in three hours, all the actors, all the staff, all the audiences are all free, all by themselves. All the teachers, I put them, like for example, on the stairs uh, or, or in the corner, uh, in these places, but uh, they cannot do anything. They just uh, stand there and watch, like a security guard. Mm -hmm. But all the students are level free. This, this thing is that never happening in any Chinese school because there is, there is a risk. This is our children <laughs> the, uh, the groups. Uh, the three one, the Jingwei, Feeding After Sea, the Mayfly, and the Antigone were all accepted by the Dalian Chan Theater Festival. Dalian Chan Theater Festival is one of the top three theater festivals in China. The top one is the Wuzhen Festival. And this one is also in the top three. And they, normally there was no children perform in such professional theater, theater festival. But uh, this year we have three plays performed there. So you can see. These are the, the scenes of the performances that you. And the stage is also very special. It's open air, and behind us is the moon theater. Because the shape of the stage is like a moon. Um, but our children, they are very little, very little. So when they step up on the stage, I will say, okay, maybe it's too big theater for a stage for them. But also in the end, it cannot be a very successful performances. We got a very good feedback from the audiences and also from the uh, organizing committee.
And uh, the, when this, um, they're promoting them, sell their play, the performances, they, I also actually perform, uh, promote by themselves. It's, it's kind of education for them. Uh, so uh, the previous one of, of the two groups of our primary school, uh, this one is from our middle school. Uh, they, were, they were performing the Antigonia. And uh, also the other one last semester we did is uh, near uh, a village near our school. It's uh, also a very uh, experimental festival, festival. And I was invited to be the co-curator for this particular festival. And uh, our play, the puppet, is a puppet performance. And uh, so the Mayfly was performed in, in the village. And also I give the workshops for the audiences and uh, we also make um, uh, like a free market, a market for the theater festival. This is all, this was the first time for our children to really involve uh, in the theater festival outside, outside of the school. And uh, this is the official one, it's a Chinese children theater festival, it's organized by the, by the government. And uh, we were, uh, this uh, last year we had uh, two plays, uh, these two, these two plays from our school, uh, directed by me and uh, Ellie. And actually, the third performance is this one. It's also a puppet theater performance. It's also directed by us, but it's the, the children are not from our school. These children, they are from the community. They were from around ten schools, but they we did this also a uh, workshop in the summer. And this one is also this one is very difficult. The children, the small, the little, the smallest one, they, they were still in kindergarten, and the the, uh, the oldest one, I think, they are, they are in like uh, ten or eleven years old. But then they need to collaborate. So when they uh, control the puppet, the one, the two children control one. So one in front, one behind. They need to collaborate. But uh, you you see the space here is very small. And then they were wearing the earphone. So, it, so they can only really talk. Okay, I think now it's better now. No, I told them you cannot say anything except your lines. And uh, the whole performance lasted, uh, I think, around 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 25 minutes. It's a long time. And they just collaborated in a very small space very well. Actually, the children didn't know each other at all. Only they spent together with us for seven days. And then we created this play. And uh, also, we joined some art festivals. I was also the curator of this art, fe art festival last year. Uh, it's a huge one. It's an, uh, this year will be the 10th year of this uh, festival. Uh, and uh, also, we collaborate with museums, galleries, and uh, theaters. So, I'm also the director of the theater, I'm also the artist in residence of the gallery. Uh, we brought our children to the gallery and to the theaters. Also, we invite the theater group of the, uh, the professional theater group to have class in our, in our school. So, by in Chengdu or in, generally in China, there are very few theater performances for children. Most of the theater performances, they are just uh, with many lights, sounds, noises, and uh, very fancy, but nothing. Not a really theater thing. It's only for very something very fancy, like, a, like bubbles. So, but the, actually, the tickets for those performances are very expensive. We brought a when we came went back in 2020, we brought a young girl to watch a performance in Chengdu. Wow, I was I was really suicidal when I watched the performance. It's like I I, I, I can't bear the, all the lights or the sounds. Ah, that's crazy. But actually, it was very expensive. I remember the tickets is around maybe 30, 40 euros. 40 euros, I think, for the first one person, you know, for a child. So for one, you can imagine for three persons. It's a lot. But it's nothing. It's not, a, it's not a really something meaningful for children to see. So in my school, I told very clearly to the parents, don't go to those performances because I believe they are ruining our children's uh, mentality for the arts. So, but of course it's not good for the market. 
But uh, that's why I want to go, I accept the invitation to make this play. Um, I, w I want to uh, make some contribution to the children's good performances in the market so they can really see some good quality performances. So uh, this is a. So you see, from Chengdu to Nakhil, and then Nakhil to Chengdu, it's a circle. And now, I'm here again. But this time, not in Nakhil. This time, only in Athens. Next time. So next Monday, we will fly again. To and then in summer, we'll come back again. So it's a circle, never end. But the, uh, why I'm saying this? Because uh, some of my friends here at the facilities, you, you, you all know what I have done previously connecting the China and Greece was through the cultural projects, different cultural projects. But now it's becoming more focused on drama, on theatre. So this is really something I, I through, uh, through myself inside. Uh, I, I'm really thankful for Nafil. And uh, thankful for all my teachers from the University of Portuguese. And uh, thankful for my friends supporting me uh, all the time. So this is, you see, this is a beautiful town. This is Chengdu, also very beautiful town. Uh, city. But uh, it's, uh, uh, for us, it's, uh, you know, the, the two places, the two, the, even the country, Greece and the and Chengdu city, Chengdu, the life is very similar and also with very long history. And uh, also people like art and the people are very open-minded. And I very, also one thing I want to mention, I told my friends also in the interviews why I like Greece so much. Only, of course, there are many history, arts, blah, 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 blah food, many things. But the most important thing is the people. Always for me, the people are most important. Also, why we choose Chengdu? Because I was not from Chengdu, I'm, I was, my hometown is East China. Uh, in 2016, when I first time moved to Chengdu, I knew nobody. I was, oh, I'm, I was also a foreigner, like foreigner there. But the people there, they are like Greeks. They are very friendly to the people from other places. I know not, not in Shanghai. Like, <laughs> Shanghai people are very, uh, no, I should not say that. No. But in Chengdu, people are very open and also they are very friendly to people from other places. This is like very similar like in Greece. This, this, at least this is what I feel. So that's why I choose these places to stay and to live my life and also develop my career. Uh, so I believe but the journey actually for me just started. Uh, so today, I just want to close the gap from two years ago to today. And uh, then you will know my story from today uh, till future. So if everything will continue. Okay, that's it. That's it. very much for this uh, lecture. Um, if uh, we could use only two words to describe you, this would be a success story. Because uh, really, what you could manage is unbelievable. Congratulations. And we are very proud to have you on the class. student. And now you're writing the thesis. And uh, uh, we are wondering how you find, you manage and you find time for your research so while you are doing all this. Uh, congratulations. And um, I was wondering, before Mio Bin, uh, was there, was there um, drama education in China? Yeah. It was. You remember the lady, yeah. uh, ah, Miss okay. Mio Bin, she, she started promoting drama education 30 years ago. Okay. Kind of was very slow and uh, limited. I think drama education started really booming from the recent two or three years. I think I was in the right time. And thanks to you, and now it's developing. It's developing, not only me, but many people in China are working on drama education. Yeah. It's, a, it's something very important, you know, the people are seeing the importance of drama education now in China. So they are making our efforts. But just one, just uh, you know, we have people in China.
uh, our different understanding of drama education. <coughs> so this is the one thing very tricky now. For me, I always say, okay, I started the drama education from Greece. So I, everything from here, you don't blame me, everything from Greece. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the other people, they, 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 they learn from UK, uh, from, uh, from Germany, blah, blah, blah. So, but now in China, definitely people have a different understanding on, on drama education. This is something we, we don't know is good or bad, <laughs> but it's developing. It's like the, the time in ancient China when there were many, many nations that were fighting, they were arguing, I feel like that. I have a question on the if I understood correctly from your presentation, it seems that it's up to the principal of every school to decide upon the curriculum of the school, which is something quite different from Greece, because in, in Greece it's very rigid. It's the ministry that decides the curriculum and it has to be followed, you know, to be explained. So I am amazed that you have that kind of flexibility in China for the principal to decide, okay, I, I can have it all. And I'm very happy with the teacher. So, yeah, in China, the curriculum you have three levels. The national curriculum, which you have to do. And this the province, province curriculum, which is the, like the region that decides the curriculum. One is the school curriculum, which you can decide. For example, in the 2020 when I was in the public school, in the, I mean, in the form of the, uh, of the courses that the, the children will have, it, it's not a written drama. It's a written school curriculum. So with no name, it's not drama there. But now, of course, in our school now, we just very clearly drama. So, um, yeah, in China, we also really secure. We can also make the curriculum the same in Shanghai as the ones in the mountain village. They, they need to be different. Do you think drama could enter at least at provincial level at some point? Definitely. Definitely. Actually, now it's supporting from the national level. But there's also problems for um, in the in the promoting. The first thing is the lack of I said, the lack of the qualified drama teachers. So this is the most critical thing. The second is uh, the understanding what is drama education. Really, in most of the people in China, the, the understanding of drama education still get the children make a play. That's the drama education. But uh, not really, what we really want to do. We don't, we don't want, want to make the children, or all, all children to be actors. We have it as a compulsory drama class for all the children. So they, they didn't understand this. So also, there is one more important because, or, uh, uh, to answer your question is, the, for every school, um, you know, in the curriculum standard, there is a rule for each discipline, to teach each discipline, must have how long time per week or per semester. This is decided for, the, for example, the longest about Chinese language, of course. It has 13% uh, of, as if I remember correct, 30% of the time, the teaching time, belongs to uh, Chinese language. And then around 11% belongs to mathematics. And uh, the third one is, is uh, uh, sports. Uh, sports, uh, I think they have for also around 10 to 11 percent. And for arts, it's around 9 to 11 percent. So it's a relative number of folks. It's also very important. Yeah. So, but then the school will decide uh, how many hours they really put for the uh, school. Uh, I can say that uh, what you have done is unbelievable now because you, you just brought uh, uh, under focus the drama in your country. Huh? I think otherwise uh, it was uh, uh, this uh, woman we saw, but uh, um, she didn't move a lot on the, in, inside the uh, administration. On this. So you managed to bring... Uh, as uh, here we are some persons in Greece, uh, it's not so simple how drama entered uh, the uh, school. And it's, uh, I cannot say any, but it's the ministry that uh, brought it. 
Uh, for example, we are some persons that uh, have worked for, for drama and education, as, and Nikos Gobas is uh, a capital for all this uh, work that is uh, here today. Uh, and uh, I would like to say uh, congratulations for him, you know, because there are, it became uh, something dramas uh, uh, slowly and at the end it was uh, the, um, the ministry that uh, accepted and put it inside the schools, you see. Yeah. So it's about the same in, uh, in another scale, of course, if we speak about China. Uh, it's, uh, and it's due to your job that you did and, uh, uh, because uh, it's uh, uh, now works as all the ministries together, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we can say that uh, I I hope you got you you go on with your work. And uh, only I I want to say something. Try to go in, out. Of, now you did the first job. Eh? You worked for. Uh, all these things we saw that it's a marathon for me it looks like a marathon so now you try to work in more social places so I would like to see you next time when you come in Greece to have been in prisons I didn't <laughs> 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 okay yeah I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let you uh, okay yeah. because I think uh, you know I mean to be more a uh, social we start yeah. all from one point so you open the doors to your country, so now you have to look uh, inside. You you mentioned uh, children with special needs. You mentioned these places, so I think uh, you have to work uh, even uh, on that and uh, to some other places like as prisons. You have to do the first, to, yeah, the yeah, first yeah. to try it, uh, it because. Yeah. Uh, this is also I think I want to add. Um, actually, I have been focusing on that. For example, you remember the actually the public class in the National Drama Education Forum. That in that class, the, the, the story I chose is Cinderella. It's a fairy tale. Yeah. But you know, the previous day, I went to the local school to meet the children there. It's a local children from the local school. And then the principal of the school also came to the classroom and said, oh, there's a with me. Hi, uh, you know. Welcome to our school. Uh, then he asked, what will you teach tomorrow? I said, Cinderella. Oh, he said, wow, very nice, beautiful fairy tale. I said, yeah. But I said, my focus on this class will be the bullying. Mm -hmm. and, then he, and then he was silent. He <laughs> said, oh, okay. Hey, hey, please get a cup of tea for me. He said, yeah. Because, yeah, it's sensitive in you know, a school to talk about bullying. But it's happening. And also, even the national media stuff are reporting the bullying things. Also, we found even in primary school, there are the bullies. So, for me, you know, on the stage, in the open class, I just openly talk about the bullying. And I'm, I put the, uh, the focus of that drama, drama class for, for the children to explore how Cinderella was bullied and uh, how, if we are Cinderella, how we can help her. Or, if we are Cinderella, how, what would we do? If we see someone is being bullied, what we can do? So this is what I, I focus. So actually in my class, we focus a lot on, on well, the first day, normally in my class, in the system, now I also discuss with Eddie, in the young age, the first year, second year, we focus more on the basics, uh, bodies, body expression. You know the Chinese children, like in the past or in now, are very interested in the body. Mm -hmm. So we we now really encourage them from young age to really open their body, to freeze their body. This is something I really found here in Greek theater, which I really like. So I brought this to the to our camp class. Also then in the third year to the fourth year, our focus will move to like the, what you said here, to not be there at all. So find yourself understand yourself more on the psychology part because the children from the third year, I don't know if you're in Greece, but in China in that age, the children will explore more discoveries of the society, of the families, they will make more problems, difficulties. So then we will also 
even some parents will say, okay, my children are in three or primary school, uh, he's so annoyed now, becoming a... Uh, and that is when they have the psychology, not the issue, but the thinking. So we, in third year, fourth year, we move there. So we use many stories and also many uh, materials to develop the drug, like milk is. Milk is for the children for the fourth year. So how children, uh, should the, can, will, how should the world be like, or what we can do in the pandemic? It is something think about themselves. And then the fifth year and the sixth year, then our focus will move to the social issues, as you say. Because now in our school, the highest is only for the third year. We don't have the fourth and fifth year yet. But uh, for example, like, uh, for the middle school, the children, they perform the antigone. So talk about the uh, social issues. Uh, even also the issues in the school. So this is just, um, what, what we are we are trying to do. But of course, as like uh, I told, uh, I discussed with uh, David Commander, we are was in that field. Because he he worked a lot on social theater. Let's say I told him that time that, that time I said I can really do as you do in Soviet Union or in Greece or in Africa. That's too much in, in, in for, for us. But definitely I will use the methods to make the to deal with some the really some problems, some issues of the society. We will we would uh, encourage our students to really think about it. So basically in our drama class we have a principle for that. And, uh, and we don't have standard answers. All the things we put we leave for the children themselves to think. Why are we really hope we wish they have the critical thinking? Yeah. Oh, but anyway, so uh, they can have a PhD for critical thinking. Oh, okay. That's <laughs> <in mind. laughs> yeah. I think it's a critical thinking is some uh, yeah. essential element in drum education. Yes. Yeah. So we don't really like the, some teachers that, that give the answers, that tell the children what is right, what is wrong in the class. Uh, even for them, like when, when I teach the children in the universities, I call them no. If you're in your work, if you meet a standard answer or absolute answer, then it's not what I really want to see. Uh, because they will, they will be teachers. So if they now in their work, they, they start to have a, they, they are used to give the standard answers, then they will do this when they teach the children. So I told them, no, don't do that. So otherwise, because that's for their exams. So otherwise, I will fail you. Any other questions? I would uh, ask you, uh, Galvin, if you could give us some ancient uh, Chinese stories, or like Milkis, you come and you work with that. Yeah. So we can exchange. If you give us something, we can work for you. You of know, course. just uh, to have a, all the university, you want to make a group and yeah. work for Sunday work. As you know, have it in mind. But well, we, 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 we change. Yeah, we have a lot. Actually, like a days ago in Pericos in this drama school, yeah. in my class, uh, in the end, I gave them a story, a Chinese story, a small story, yeah. which is uh, about the Qingwei feeling up a scene. Sing, 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 sing,